welcome to hosting the Supernatural once again. I believe you had a great week and things are happening for you. Now, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we are going to show you uh, what has happened at the movement of the Supernatural right here at Carnival City in Johannesburg. It's really been an explosion of the power of God. We had incredible miracles that took place. You know, miracles of uh, creative miracles in five minutes we saw nearly 81 creative miracles taking place. And so I want to encourage you, while the show is, is going on and the programs are, are being broadcast, that you just jump into the move of God, that you just jump into the flow of God, that you just be part of this. And don't just uh, look at this program as another slot to fill, but really let it be a time of impartation, a time of the presence of God and of the glory of God to touch you. So the aim of the movement of the supernatural, and I want to share this with you before we go into the program. It is vital that you understand why we do the movement of the supernatural in our nation and around the world. The Lord dealt with me in a prophetic word uh, about three years ago. The Lord spoke to me, says, you do not carry a revival, you carry a movement. And since then, we have started the movement of the supernatural. We started in our church and uh, we were there for the first two years. It outgrew that place. We couldn't accommodate the crowds anymore. And we took the step of faith to rent the big top arena, Carnival City. And Apostle Maldonado came in and we had a great, great time. The place was packed out. It was sold out. We had to make uh, space for as many people as we could. So now that place also too small. But we want to take you into these services that you can experience the movement of God. Why is this the movement of the supernatural? I truly believe with men around the world that this is the end time. This is the end time. I'm going to say it one more time. This is the end time move of God. God, Jesus Christ is coming back. And He's not coming back for a broke church, for a disgusted church. He's coming back for a glorious church. And then he made the promise in Joel chapter 2. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's my part <clears throat> with other men of God that we are playing in the end time is to pour out the spirit of God. And I know there are many other pastors and preachers preaching on end times. And that's their function. My function, my mandate is to help move and, and get the movement of God out there so that people can be filled with the power of God demonstrate the kingdom of God with signs, wonders, and miracles, and let there be a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit before Jesus Christ comes back. So I want to take you in to the movement of the supernatural. We had not only evening services, we had two evening services, but during the day we had powerful services, uh, you know, with various guest speakers from England, from America, myself, and we were preaching there. And you can order the whole conference pack if you like, all the details are on the screen. And I would like to encourage you, uh, you know, to get the whole conference pack. We're not going to broadcast the whole conference on hosting the supernatural, but I want you to get the pack because there was one session that, uh, that, we, that uh, Shanine Clark did on how to pray, end time praise, get that session. And we had how to operate signs, wonders, and miracles. I want to take you into two sessions that I did. And there will be another two with Apostle Maldonado. And I know most of you did not uh, saw the whole complete message on the Tuesday night. So we're going to broadcast it and you're going to enjoy it. The next two weeks, you're going to be saturated in the presence of God at the movement of the supernatural. So the session that I'm going to take you in, I spoke about deliverance. Now I want you to get ready because God is about to deliver you from sickness, poverty, lack, from generational curses, the power of God is going to come upon you and I want you to receive. And when that moment comes, when we pray for deliverance, I want you to pray with us. Uh, I want you to interact with us. And you're going to see, some of you are just going to feel there's like a, a turmoil in your, in your innermost being. It's like demonic forces fighting you um, and then there will be various manifestations. But this is what we want. This is the glory of God. You're going to see demons coming out. You're going to see people being delivered. You're going to see the power of God flowing. And that's what it's all about. So I want to invite you in the next couple of weeks to join us in the movement of the supernatural and be touched and refreshed by the move of God in this end time. We love you. See you back just now. While I am uh, setting up the stage, a couple of minutes, maybe an hour or so, Apostle Maldonado is going to take over. 
and we're going to have an incredible time. I want you to understand what we are about, and then we're going to get into the Word. We are here to build. We are not here to do a show. We are not putting this thing together so that everybody can be entertained. We are carefully building towards an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I had my meeting last night with Apostle Maldonado, and he gave me the yellow notes. You know how that works. And he says, son, you build. This is what I want to happen tonight, so you need to build. And he spoke to Shanin, you need to build. And uh, tomorrow we're building, and we're building. And by tomorrow night, I'm telling you, you are going to... You, I think we're going to have to get uh, drivers to drive you home. You're probably going to have to get people to come and pick you up because you are going to be saturated with the presence of God. Come on, how many hungry people do we have for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? So this is what's going to happen. It's going to be very powerful. And uh, I thank God and give Him all the praise for what He's doing so far. And uh, allow me just to say thanks to... Uh, my team that has put this whole event together without a great team you cannot do this so would you put your hands together for all my team uh, there's so many I can't I can't say thanks to all of them individually but team you are the best I love the band we love everything about this come on this is just God in action amen and um, uh, the movement has started here in South Africa three years ago uh, Pastor Maldonado prophesied to me. He says, you're not carrying a revival uh, like your dad. You are carrying a movement. And I started the movement. I came and we just started one Wednesday night. Uh, a movement. I called it a movement of the supernatural. Didn't know it was going to go this big. And I thought on, on that one Wednesday night, uh, I'll just invite a couple of people to come. When I walked into the church, it was packed. Uh, the band was not ready. I was not ready. I had my jeans and tackies and a t-shirt on. I thought I'm just going to share a couple of minutes. And to my surprise, <laughs> the prophecy was fulfilled. Now, three years later, uh, we, we have to get arenas. And we are starting here on the east. They say, what good can come from the east? But I know something good is coming from the east. Amen. And I'm so excited to meet all of you and be a part of your lives. Thank you for being a part of our lives. Thank you for helping us build the kingdom of God. And um, my life has totally been changed through the ministry of Apostle Maldonado. And what has happened to me, I know it's going to happen to you. And you're going to see miracles. Uh, every speaker that will be here, we are building strong. Tomorrow we're focusing on breaking the spirit of poverty. And we're going to do signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, I know Dad is going to come and do great things here. So please understand, we're building together. Amen. So tonight, I think it's sold out. If I am, if, if I have my, it's sold out. And tomorrow is sold out. So I'm so glad, grateful you are here. Amen. So you are the chosen few. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I have been given the assignment and um, to do this afternoon. And I just want to say, like I said, my team is an incredible team. Um, God has just put together great people. But behind every successful man is a successful woman, praying woman, a godly woman. And um, that's my blonde bomb right there in the front, sitting there. And can you put your hands together for my beautiful wife there? Please stand, baby. There she is. Incredible woman of God. And I want to say thank you to Nikki and Michal, my sons, for paying the price with us. Uh, in this tremendous hour that we are living in. My assignment for the next couple of minutes is this. The theme is, or the title is, Understanding the Ministry of Deliverance in the Now. Understanding the Ministry of Deliverance in the Now. When the sound went off for a couple of seconds, I knew there was somebody upset. And doesn't want people to be free today. But in 30 minutes from now, there will be a cloud of the presence of God in this whole arena. And people are going to be set free. People are going to be delivered. 
people are going to walk out of this conference totally set free, delivered. You're going to get your breakthrough. That thing that has come through generations, that is about to leave your life in 30 minutes from now. Come on, how many of you believe that with me here? I declare over you right now in the name of Jesus, every bloodline curse, every generational curse, every demon that's holding your family and your finances and your body in bondage, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you eviction notice. You are coming out of their lives, out of their ministries, out of their families. In the name of Jesus. Now give God a praise if you believe it here today. Hallelujah. So we're going to see deliverance taking place in this place. 80% probably of Christians are literally bound by oppression, bound by these demonic influences. They are not possessed, but they are oppressed. And I want you, if you have your Bibles, to turn so long to the book of Matthew chapter 12. I like that. Sounds like some radical people here. Why don't we make that a culture? Our first scripture in every session, we go crazy. How's that? All right, so let's rewind. All right. Now I'm going to try. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. All right. That's awesome. Matthew chapter 12 and verse number 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. I love that. When we cast out demons or devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come. So in the next couple of minutes, you're going to see the kingdom of God come in power and in authority and the glory of God. For thine is the kingdom. So we're going to see the glory of God in this place. When you see deliverance, when you see demons leaving a person's life or his uh, lineage, when you see that happens, you have witnessed the greatest miracle ever. Why do you say that? Because this is why this is the greatest miracle. The moment a demon leaves a person's life, territory is, is leaving. Dominion is leaving. And then territory becomes open for the Spirit of God to move. So dominion comes, occupation takes place. A territory is now vacant for the Spirit of God to come. So when we say a demon must leave you, when he goes, he takes all his territory with him and his possessions and stuff. And then the kingdom of God comes and he takes possession in that place. So let's give an example. Some of you are struggling with poverty, and tomorrow we're going to take a hold of that. Some of you are struggling with, with uh, diseases, depression, all these things. It's, it's taken territory. It's taken possession of, 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 your, of your mind, literally. Territorial spirit in your mind. And so you need to understand, I, when we cast it out, we are coming against that, and then that territory becomes vacant. Please just stay with me. Because many Christians today struggle with depression, struggle with fears, struggle with unforgiveness, struggle with pornography, struggle with soul ties, addictions, suicidal thoughts, compulsive um, addictions and behaviors. And those are all things that is a stronghold in your life. Write this down. The strength of the enemy is ignorance. Write, write it down. The strength of the enemy is ignorance. There are two mistakes that the church operates in or function in today. The first mistake we have is we underestimate the devil. 
we just think, ah, oh, you know, he's defeated, and we and he is defeated. But we we underestimate him. And the second mistake what we do is we overestimate him. Some people they just go crazy with, crazy with the devil. Pastor, please come and pray. There's a there's a portrait in my house. This portrait has a demon on it. And uh, please come and cast it out. And I'm thinking, well, if, it, if you see the demon in the portrait, why do you keep it on there then? Why do you need to phone somebody to come and take it off? I'm not a handyman. You take it off yourself. <laughs> Pastor, this teacup is from the devil. Well, throw it away if you don't like it or give it to me. Give that painting to me, whatever. Because here's the thing. There is no power greater than the Holy Spirit. If you have a revelation of the Holy Ghost inside of you, that when, the, when you feel a portrait is bigger than Jesus, then we have a problem in the church, and so we overestimate the devil. Oh, he's so massive, he's so big, and, and, and he's in that teacup, and he's in the Christmas tree. And Some people say to me, the Christmas tree is from the devil, and, and, and all these things. So I, I, I decorated a whole church full of Christmas trees. And I'm telling you, we had the greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Because the greatest tree ever, the cross, was also a tree. Amen? But anyway, let's leave it there. We overestimate the devil. The devil has no power. Or let me rather say, the devil has power, but no authority. So he has been given the power because he was an angel. He's been given power. But he cannot operate in that power without authority being given to him. So he goes to Adam and Eve and he takes the authority away from them. And then he starts operating in that authority that he stole from them. Then Jesus Christ came, stripped him of all his power and authority. And he comes out of the grave and he looks at the Christians and he says, Now, I have given unto you, come on, the keys of the kingdom that whatever you bind on this earth shall be bound in heaven and on earth and whatever you loose on this earth shall be loosened in heaven you have been given the keys of the kingdom church come on shout I have the keys why don't we just do some manifestation here take your your keys in the spirit say this with me I bind you devil come on say I bind you in my family I bind you in my business. I bind you in my ministry. I bind you in my finances. Say this, now I loose prosperity, healing, deliverance, breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Come on, give him a praise. Can we take 30 seconds and praise the Lord in this house? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You can take your seats. We don't have deliverance in the church because we don't preach Jesus on the cross anymore. People come to church sick and they leave sick. I saw a clip somebody saying and they said about this. There's a man, a, 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 a colored uh, pastor that did a wedding. And somebody came and said, please pray for me, I've got a headache. He says, don't waste the Lord's time, just take a discipline. <laughs> <laughs> somebody came and said, I've got sugar up here. that sugar needs to be in the tea, not in your body. But anyway, we don't preach Jesus on the cross anymore. So people come in sick and they leave sick. They come in bound with demons, pornography, lust, adultery, all these things come in and they leave with them. Come in sick, go sick. Come in bound, leave bound. And the church 
we need to hear this message of deliverance once again in the house of God. I know people say, yeah, but you know, what is, what's going to happen when they start vomiting on the carpet? Well, change the carpet. But rather get people free, man. Come on now, is that right? The first time I went to Apostle Maldonado's church and they had some deliverance there, the ushers, every usher walk around with a, with a whole roll of plastic bags. And they go and they see where's all the people who's being delivered. And they take out rolls upon rolls of plastic bags. And the people, they just vomit there. And people are getting free. They're not, they are not scared or uh, ashamed of, of people, you know, being set free. But let me tell you that when those people leave that building, they are free. They are delivered. They go and they become disciples of the kingdom of the living God. Come on, I wish South Africa can have that encounter with God, that we can be free again, that we understand the power of deliverance. Shout amen if you believe it with me. So people come to church angry and they leave angry. People come to church with offense and leave with offense. Come with unforgiveness and leave with unforgiveness. They are, some of them are getting even worse because pastor didn't greet me and the usher didn't give me my seat and, and all these things and they leave with more offense. Each time we draw the line and we say now, Father, in this session today, because in the, in the next session you're going to have an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I want to be free. I want to be delivered. Let me tell you this, family. I, I want to say this with all, with all honesty in my heart. A deliverance ministry is a con continual ministry when apostle spoke to me he says you need to tell the people that it's a continual thing it's not because you are a satanist or you are was a witch or a sinner that you need deliverance and then that's done we go continually to be delivered to be set free and we as the church of jesus christ we have to come to the place where we say jesus come back for a glorious church not a defeated church, not a broke church, not a messed up church, but come back for a church who is clean, delivered, set free. I wish I had 2,000 people that could shout, Jesus, I am delivered. Take your seats. Our, our time is quickly running out. Psychology and counseling have replaced the ministry of deliverance. We counsel demons instead of casting them out. Spend hours counseling demons. What is the four ministries of Jesus? Four ministries of Jesus, write them down, was to preach, to teach, to heal, and to deliver. What did Jesus do? He preached. Say preached. He teach. Healed and he delivered. So deliverance is 25% of the wholeness of Jesus' ministry. Some people just teach, so they just do 25%. Some people just preach or yeah, preach the word of God, 25%. We have to do the whole ministry of Jesus. We have to preach, we have to teach, we have to heal. And we have to deliver. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now, it's illegal to preach the kingdom of God without deliverance. If you go and see the, the word of the Lord, you'll see that Jesus never cast out a demon secretly and in private. He always did it publicly. Because he makes a public spectacle of the kingdom of darkness. Yay! Yeah. All right, so why do we need to demonstrate the ministry of deliverance in the now? Firstly, number one, is to demonstrate to darkness the true power of Jesus. Let's say it again. Why do we need this ministry? To demonstrate to darkness. The true power of Jesus. The second reason is that the times that we are living in, in the now, demands of us to operate in the supernatural. 
2 Timothy chapter 3 and uh, verse number 1. It says this, But know this, that in the last days, in the last days, how many of you know we are in the last days? So perilous times will come. That word means the following, supernatural demonic influence. Well, I believe as you are, are seeing the program and you're seeing the Word of God, that we are building. Remember, we are builders. We are kingdom builders. So we are building, building, building. Uh, don't miss tomorrow night's program. It's getting better. It's the anointing of God is getting up there. And I want you to understand the power of God is going to hit your home, your life, your family, your business. You're never going to be the same again in the next two weeks. So I want to encourage you. Get your friends around. Put a reminder on this program. Would, would you please do me a favor and join me on Facebook? Just type in my name, Nikki van der Westhuizen. It's a public pr uh, page. Don't send a friend request. Just, a, just like the page. Uh, and we would like to stay in contact. Share with us your testimonies. You know, testimonies are powerful. Testimonies are the proof that Jesus Christ is alive. If we remove testimonies from, Christian, from Christianity, we've got nothing. We've got no legacy. So please send us your testimonies. Uh, send us your praise reports. And all the details are on the screen. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and also on this program called Hosting the Supernatural. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for being a part with me. If you're not a partner yet, when you go on, on the website and just click Partnership, Becoming a glory carrier with your finances and financial support, we can reach South Africa and Africa for Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So thank you so much for sowing into this program. We love you and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. See you next time.